China has yet again shocked the world. In a groundbreaking development, China is set to welcome its first foreign astronaut aboard the Tiangong space station, marking a significant milestone in international space collaboration. But this isn't just a one-time gesture. Just weeks ago, on January 17, 2025, China launched Pakistan satellite, PRSC, EO-1, into orbit using a long march, 2D rocket from a Jiuquan satellite launch center in the Gobi Desert. The whole world saw how China helped Pakistan in its space mission. But what is China's reason behind this? Why is China investing so heavily in Pakistan's space ambitions? What does China gain from this alliance? And more importantly, how will this shake up the global space race? On February 28, 2025, the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, and Pakistan Space and Upper Atmosphere Research Commission, SAPARCO, formalize a revolutionary agreement. This isn't just another diplomatic handshake. It's Pakistan's golden ticket to the stars, specifically to China's cutting-edge Tiangong space station. Industry analysts estimate the agreement includes technology transfer elements worth approximately $300 million in terrestrial applications. The signing ceremony in Islamabad wasn't merely ceremonial. Behind closed doors, officials hammered out unprecedented details. Pakistani astronauts will train alongside China's elite taikonauts, using sophisticated simulation technology previously unavailable to all but a handful of nations. This collaboration breaks the traditional space power monopoly, declared Dr. Aisha Khan, Saparko's director of international partnerships. We're witnessing the democratization of space access. The selection process beginning next month will be brutally competitive. From an initial pool of over 700 applicants, only eight Pakistani candidates will advance to preliminary training. These individuals, drawn from military aviation, academic research, and engineering sectors, face an elimination gauntlet including extreme G-force testing, extended isolation trials, and advanced problem-solving under pressure. The standards match those used by established space powers, with no concessions made despite Pakistan's newcomer status. What's particularly fascinating is a customized training regimen designed specifically for this mission. Selected candidates will undergo a 12-month immersion at Beijing's Astronaut Center China, including 2,000-plus hours of technical training and a mandatory 400 hours of Mandarin instruction. They'll practice in the world's largest neutral buoyancy tank, simulating spacewalks in conditions identical to those they'll encounter 400 kilometers above Earth. The Tiangong station itself represents China's $9 billion answer to the International Space Station. Completed in 2022 after just two years of assembly, this 180-ton orbital laboratory features breakthrough life support systems that recycle 95% of water and generate oxygen through advanced electrolysis. Its three modules, Tianhe, Wentian, and Mengtian, contain 25 experiment racks capable of supporting over 1,000 scientific investigations during the station's operational lifetime. The Pakistani astronauts' two-week mission aboard Tiangong will be anything but symbolic. The mission manifest includes conducting pioneering research on agriculture in microgravity with experiments on Pakistani wheat varieties that could revolutionize food security strategies. They'll also deploy Saparco's miniaturized Earth observation system, capable of monitoring glacial retreat in the Karakoram Range with unprecedented 30 centimeters resolution. For China, this partnership delivers multiple strategic advantages. It demonstrates their space station's interoperability with international partners, positions China as the primary space mentor for developing nations, and strengthens their influence along the economic corridors of the Belt and Road Initiative. Industry analysts estimate the agreement includes technology transfer elements worth approximately $300 million in terrestrial applications. Pakistan stands to gain even more. This mission will trigger a cascade of technological advancements as Saparco implements knowledge transfer protocols across its domestic aerospace sector. Conservative projections suggest a 40% increase in advanced engineering enrollment at Pakistani universities following the mission, with an estimated economic multiplier effect of $1.2 billion over five years through technology spin-offs and international research partnerships. The ripple effects extend far beyond the immediate mission objectives. 
Specialized training programs initiated under this partnership will create a new generation of Pakistani aerospace engineers, material scientists, and system specialists. Local manufacturing capabilities will be significantly enhanced as domestic firms adapt to meet the stringent quality requirements of space-grade components. This technological leap presents unprecedented opportunities for Pakistan's broader innovation ecosystem. Emerging startups focused on satellite applications, remote sensing and telecommunications are already positioning themselves to capitalize on newly accessible expertise. The government has recognized this potential by establishing dedicated aerospace innovation zones near major universities, creating vital bridges between academic research and commercial applications. Perhaps most importantly, this mission represents a transformative national moment that will inspire Pakistani youth to pursue STEM careers. Beyond quantifiable economic benefits, the psychological impact of seeing Pakistani-built components operating in space cannot be overstated creating a powerful symbol of what the nation can achieve through international scientific collaboration. The implications extend far beyond these two nations. This agreement has already prompted discussions of similar arrangements between China and five other nations across Asia and Africa. The diplomatic ripples are spreading rapidly, with preliminary talks reportedly underway with Vietnam, Indonesia, Nigeria, Egypt, and Kenya, all eager to leverage Chinese expertise to accelerate their own space ambitions. These potential partnerships represent a fundamental shift in how developing nations approach space participation. The European Space Agency has responded by fast-tracking its own partnership initiatives with emerging space nations, while NASA administrators have called for a policy review regarding international collaboration restrictions. This reactionary positioning reveals how seriously traditional space powers are taking this redistribution of cosmic influence. The ESA's newly announced Space Access Initiative aims to provide technical support and launch opportunities to nations previously excluded from major space projects, while NASA's internal review suggests American space policy may be forced to evolve beyond Cold War era limitations. Perhaps most significantly, this new model of space collaboration is democratizing access to orbital and deep space capabilities. Nations that once viewed independent space programs as generational ambitions are now exploring pathways that could yield results within years rather than decades. The technical knowledge transfer components of these agreements ensure that participating countries aren't merely purchasing services, but building indigenous capabilities. This isn't just a momentary headline. It's the beginning of a new chapter in humanity's endless quest to reach for the stars, one that promises to redraw the map of international space collaboration for decades to come. As we witness the transformation of space from an exclusive club to an increasingly diverse community, we may be entering the most dynamic era of space exploration since the original space race. If you like watching this video, please give a like. That really helps other people find my video as well. Thank you so much for watching The Space Grid. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.